Hello, this is Vale and welcome to my channel. In this video today, I'm going to demonstrate some basic SQL injection techniques and these are going to be classical SQL injections. Now, very honestly, who is this video for? Well, this video is for absolute beginners, which means I'm targeting people who don't even know what SQL is by itself and also the people who are uh, automated penetration testers, which means uh, they use automated tools all the time, maybe a map then uh, goes through, you know, Nessus and Acunetics. And so they do not necessarily have to know all of the behind the scenes uh, of what's happening every time these tools use a command. So I'm going to target those people who don't know the basics of what SQL is or what SQL injection is. So if you are advanced and you already know what I'm going to show and what basic SQL injection looks like, uh, this is a probably a good time to skip to another video. Anyways, so what is SQL injection? So SQL injection is a technique where we provide some malformed information uh, to a website and when the website queries that information to the database, the database works like it shouldn't have worked as the programmer has decided for it to work. So say, for example, the programmer of the website decided that when we tried a uh, query, for example, let's say we search for a product called uh, iPhone. So the programmer has done a query that would show all of the iPhones maybe that has released in 2012, for example. So what a hacker could do is he could form a query in such a way that the query that the SQL server behind the website or that is residing in the backend will execute is something maybe like show all the iPhones that has been released and is or available or is going to be available soon enough which is probably a secret thing so the database might show us everything that it has that even has a keyword iPhone in it so we can do a query to see all of the hidden details of hidden products within a server and we can also do more damage for example we can try and break the database to give us information about the root username and password of the SQL server itself then we can escalate to maybe querying the information about the root username and password of the operating system itself so we can do a lot of things with SQL injection and SQL injection has different levels of complexities so in this video today I'm going to show you the basic ones but normally these days these type of classical injections don't work because uh, we use something called object relational models then uh, we also sanitize our queries pretty good that's why when a hacker maybe malforms a request that request is not passed to the mysql or the sql server at all so these type of injections don't work nowadays generally but sometimes the high level complexity SQL injections does. Now to know those high level injections you need to know the basic ones first and where and how and what to get data from. So uh, let me proceed to the injection part. Now just before showing you the SQL injection let me say what is SQL and why do we need to use it. So let's say if you can uh, see what I'm showing on my desktop so let's say I have a database called test and a table within the database called test underscore BB now I have three products as you can see in this table that is uh, 1700 BT from Edifier, E10C from Sound Magic, and Zynex 302 from Behringer now this can be a database in a shop or a company who is selling products so they might be have taken the stocks of these products now what could be the problem that if if the programmer used a file, a notepad file or a word file to keep all the information on their servers. Now the problem would be there would be a problem of redundancy. So what I mean by that if say that uh, we as a company has two branches and we both took the stock of this uh, Edifier 1700BT. Now what we could have done is say that I uploaded my notepad file which already has uh, this product and at the same time, the other guy, maybe the manager in the other branch, did the same thing. Now, what would be the problem is that none of the right information will get uploaded because there is a possibility of the files getting overwritten. 
the, there is a possibility that uh, due to doing the job at the same exact time, there could be a possibility of a corrupted file. We cannot query those files. For example, uh, if I wanted to say that, give me all the products that Edify sells below the price range of 15,000. So we, <clears throat> we cannot do that. We cannot do these kind of things automatically. Maybe manually we can, but let's say the database consists like a million entries. So doing the same thing in a database containing a million entries is pretty hard. So that's what, one of the reasons we use SQL. Then a same database can be viewed by many other person and can be updated, inserted, or deleted at the same time without being the original file getting corrupted. So that's why I use something called a database management system. And in this class today, I'm going to show you with the database management system, MySQL. So there are many products like this, such as MySQL, then there is, there is Microsoft SQL, there is PostgreSQL, Microsoft Access. So there are many types of databases and there are some parts that is common in all of the four databases that I just mentioned. And also the injections work in all of these databases. So the, let me just tell you that the database itself is not injection proof, all right? What is injection proof is though, that is the software that is residing just in the middle of the front end and the back end. So what I'm trying to say here is if a website is SQL injectable or not, it depends completely upon the programmer. If the programmer has uh, sound knowledge of security and injections in general, then this type of problems would not happen. Anyway, in an SQL database, you will see that this is the same format that a database holds data in. Let me show you an example. Let me show you, uh, let me type show databases. And I have this database called test. As you can see, the, this name is also in the PDF. So let me go ahead and use this database. So use test show tables. And within the tables, we have only one table residing in this particular database called, called test underscore BB. So if I query that database, you can see select star from um, test underscore BB where, okay, nowhere, just let me keep it on that. So as you can see that this table image is same as the one that I was showing you in this PDF version. So let me just teach you some basic queries on how a normal database would look like and also how a very simple website queries the same information after taking information from the user, uses that as a query and gives that user back some information about a product or about something that maybe the user wants to see. So as you can see, if I wanted to see something like uh, show me all the products that belongs under the company called Edifier. So how could a programmer make a query to see the same. So select star from test underscore BB, which is the name of the table in this case, where, where is a particular clause in MySQL and in every SQL apparently. So where company is equal to edifier. So when we type particularly this command, what happens is that the database will only spit out information about products that only is under the company called edifier. So if I type the same thing, in my database, you can see what I mean. So select star from test underscore BB where um, brand, I'm writing brand here because the name of the column here is brand. In my PDF, the name of the column was company. So that doesn't matter here. So brand equals edifier. You can see that I get the product 1700BD along with the price and its category. So this is how normally it looks like even in a real database. So let me move on to the next query. So if I wanted to uh, see something like all the Edifier products that is under the price of 15,000. So in this case, we have to use another clause called end. And I'm showing you these things because all of these things is very trivial in an SQL injection as well. So select product name from test BB where company is equal to Edifier. Now, up until this point, this query, the first query, which I just showed you, and this query is identical, right? Just after this, we just included this AND clause, and this means that I am giving two conditions to the SQL database, saying that I want to see all the products that belongs to the company Edifier, and the price range is within 12,000. Now, if my price is 12,000, this will show. If it was more than 12,000, it won't show, 
but if it was any number between 0 to 1200, 12,000, it would have shown. So if I just type the same thing on my MySQL database, you can see the same results will come up. So select star from uh, test underscore BB where brand equals ad fire and price is lesser than or equal to 1200 12000 so if i execute this query okay i'm getting an error why let me see i think i made some mistake but i'm not sure where okay i got it now i don't know where this equal sign came from okay what Select. Okay. Sorry for that. Actually, I'm very tired today. That's why these type of errors are happening. So I think this will not give an error. And see, I'm getting an empty set because in this database of mine, my price range is 12,500. So if I do the same thing but change this, okay, maybe keep this same and change this to greater than. So in that case, I will get one result from my database saying that I have a product in fact called uh, 1700 BG from the Edifier company which costs above than 12,000 so let's move on to the next thing that is what happens well of course not technically because what happens in a real database is that we have multiple tables alright so there is something called atomicity and normalization in a database now if you want to know what are these you can always go over to the Google and understand what what it does but for knowing SQL injection you normally don't need joins usually so I'm not going to teach you what a join is or what normalization is but just let me say that basically what happens usually is something like that maybe a join has a bigger meaning has a complex meaning but actually it's doing just something like a usual query but in a more complex way so what happens is maybe you have headed over on Amazon and you search for the product 1700 BT so what happens and how a coder works here is say that the name of this box is search. So if you head over to any website like this and you can hit on inspect element on each of these search boxes and you can see that there is an HTML name for this kind of boxes. So maybe in this case the name of the box is search. So what happens that maybe if the backend software is PHP or ASP sorry or Java whatever it is there is uh, the pseudocode or the abstract code for all of these is essentially the same just not the syntax so let me say that we took a variable called variable name maybe so let's say var1 is the variable name so we took a variable called var1 and what we did is we have assigned that variable to whatever the user had put in this search box so if the user has put in 1700bt then whatever value this box named search currently has gets transferred to this variable called var1 now we have the value that the user typed in so how the coder now forms the query is something like it takes another variable maybe var2 equals select star from products where product name like 1700bt now the like has its own meaning uh, we only use like when the user doesn't exactly know the name of the product so say he only heard the product name 1700 BT but he doesn't know that the company name is Edifier or maybe he heard something like a product name called 17 something BT but he doesn't know the exact name so what he can do is he can write on the search box Edifier 17 BT or Edifier 17 so what happens is this like command what it does it is it scans for the first letters and the last letters so if we have only provided the 17 within the search box what it does is it will show all of the products from the table that has the name 17 in the start of the characters so say that uh, there is a product called 1700bt already uh, that exists in the database maybe there is another product called 1750bt it might be possible right so what will happen is that this query will display both the products because both of them starts with 17 alright so this is what happens in, in a very easy way and the results get stored in this variable called var2 now the job of the front end comes in so when you see the same display on your phone or in your web browser on your desktop or mobile phone what happens is 
in that HTML page, we have something called a div or a division. So a div is any block of text or a block of image in a web page that you see. So what I did was, what a programmer normally does is, he takes a div and within that, he just pastes all of the information that he got from the last query and where the information is already stored in a variable which the programmer knows about. So what it does is, when, you, when a normal user types 1700BT uh, and hits enter, he gets a result like Edifier 1700BT, of course he's a product in the store which is priced at 12,500. So he might get that, right? So what's really happening there is, what the programmer does is, if this variable, this variable in this case is particularly an associative array. Associative array is something where the index is also denoted by a name but not a number. So if you know about what an array is, so just take the variable called maybe a. So a equals to 10, you can do, but what if you had to take all the, you have to name all the states in the United States, for example. So in that case, you will need lots of variables, but in that case, what you can do is you can keep all of the name of the states in one variable, thus making the variable an array. That maybe the array has 15 rooms, all right? Hypothetical rooms, of course. So in the room one, we have maybe New York. In room two, maybe there is Minnesota. In the room three, maybe there, there is Chicago. So we can have those, right? Now, these rooms are the indexes and those states or those cities are the values. So if I wanted to see what is in the room 10th of the variable, so we would just say variable a dot 10. In that case, we will get the result maybe if there, if there is New York in the 10th room, then we will get the result New York. But in a, in a case of associative array, these indexes are also names which makes us human beings to remember the positions more precisely. So these brand name price are the rooms. So what I'm doing or what a normal coder does is he just pastes these variables like var2.brand, var2.name is priced at, this is a string, then var2.price. Now when we run the program or when the user hits enter, this gets converted to this. So if you can see that var2.brand in this case is verified 1700BT because the user searched specifically for 1700BT, right? So there is only one product in the table called 700BT which uh, which apparently the company name is for Edifier. So he gets the brand name, he gets the product name and the price because he doesn't know coding and he doesn't need to know coding. But what the programmer does is he just programmed the page like this. Now, one thing that is very important to notice here is that if you see the original table, there is also something called the product ID, right? Now, can you see any mention of ID here? No, so that's what I wrote here is that var2 dot id is not being shown, which doesn't mean that the number of columns displayed in HTML has to be equal to of the databases. So this thing is very much relevant to learning SQL injection because at many times you have to find out how many columns does the current table has. Now we how can we do that is coming on the next part, of course, in the next section of the video. But just to say that you cannot use the number of uh, columns the HTML is showing you to verify how many columns the actual database or the table has. Because how many tables it will show on the HTML or on the front end depends upon the programmer. But how many uh, rows or how many columns does the database spits out is not dependent on the programmer. All right. So you cannot trust the HTML or the web browser's display to figure out how many columns a database actually has. Now, the last two things that you will have to know pretty much well to understand SQL injection is this order by clause. Now, order by clause is more like used for sorting. So if I go onto my VMware and say that select star from test BB. I'm not going to use where now. So you can see those three uh, entries as the first one as you have already seen but what if I wanted to sort these data according to maybe category so if I do this on the same comment let's say order by category what will happen is that the category will be 
sorted alphabetically from lower to higher or in ascending order but the sorting will done only on the category column right so you can see that audio interfaces starts with a headphones start with h and speakers starts with s so this uh, particular arrangement is in ascending order but if you look at the id the id is just the reverse or the names are not shown like it is in the original database so why do we need order i in case of sql injections so when we want to know how many columns does this mysql table has we need order by so how we can use that order by i will show you later in this video but just know for now uh, we can always do this to any of the numbers so maybe uh, we want to test sorting with brand so this will also work now the only the brand column is ascendingly sorted right here now one thing that is very important we can do this with the actual names of the columns but also we can do it with the position of the column so let's say that we want to display the table but in ascending order of price so in which place of the table does price resides in so one two three so the price is in the third column right so if i just type in so let's start from test maybe order by three it will go the same as if we have done order by price so you can see that now the price is ascendingly arranged so one thing that you need to know is what if i do so let's start from order uh, test maybe order by four this also works because in the fourth position is the category if i do five it will also work the same but what if I do six because there is not six columns in this table so if I do six I get unknown column six in order clause now we can use this statement to verify how many columns does a table has when we are testing for SQL injection so this is the part of order by that you needed to know and the second part is union select so union select is something that you need to know we can actually append two select statements after each other by the use of union but only with one condition that both of the results have to be in the same number of columns so for example we have two tables in this database called test maybe test underscore bb and test underscore cc and we have variable number of columns so say the test bb has five columns and the test cc has seven columns now if we use union select to display all of the information from both of the tables now that won't work but if the number of columns in both test bb and test bb uh, test cc were the same then we could choose union select and when we get the results we can append the results from both the tables after each other all right so if i just test this out union okay not here so let's say i'm going to use the information from the same database and, and same table because i do not have another table right with me here right now but I'm just going to show you that how we can use union now in case of SQL injection what we do is we need to know the number of columns because then only we can use union select because at that time we will know how many columns of data we want actually to retrieve so say we have a username and password table in some database lying in the server so username and password is two columns right and in this test BB we have five columns so now when we come to know that the current database that is test bb which i'm using has five columns we exactly know how many more columns we need to add in the users table to be able to perform an union select so now if that table where the username and password resides doesn't have that much columns we can actually display garbage information by doing something like select garbage 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 username and password now this garbage value can be anything maybe it's an l value maybe it's one two three so let me just show you what i'm talking about so if i do select star from test bb where name equals e 10 c so this gives me uh, the e 10 c product which is priced at 1999 that has this category of headphones and brand is sound magic so we are going to union select both the select uh, statements will be from the same tables because we have the same number of columns in the of course in the same table so we can do this by saying after this query has ended union select and again union is just a divider we can say that or a conjoiner whatever you want to say so 
two select statements are being joined with the help of union. So select star from test BB where name equals 1700BT. So if I do this, you can see that we get two results. Now the problem is that this does not have to be always on the same table. All right, and that's how we are going to leverage uh, other tables in the database through SQL injection. But just let me say that when the number of columns is same for the both of the tables, we will just do union select. And if you can see that the first part of the query was about ETNC, so we get the ETNC product information first. Then after union, this res the result from this part of query is appended right next to the first row. So as I was talking about garbage values, so this is what we can do. So we can just type in union select one, two, three, four, five from dual. So dual is a hypothetical table. We use this to test applications, nothing else more. So if I do this, you can see that I just get one, two, three, four, five. So as I was talking about, if I wanted to display the username and password from some other database and uh, residing in another table, so if I, if I wanted to do that, I would just fill in the rest of the empty columns with values like 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I can show you the same thing with this table by itself. So if I wanted to say, uh, see, say the first part of the query is same, but on the second part of the query, we just want to know the name or the brand of the product, maybe edifiers. So union select uh, brand from test BB where uh, name is this name yes name equals edifier now I will get an error see why it will directly say to me that this used select statements have a different number of columns so my skill is already saying to us that both of the tables have different number of columns so we cannot actually view the data in the same table so in that case I will count that the number of columns we have in this table is five and the number of columns that we want to uh, view from the other table in this case it is the same table but maybe we can just say the number of columns that act we actually want from the other select segment is just one so we need to fill in the blanks here so we can use the same statement but say select brand name from taste baby so select brand brand is the column here right so this is the one this is one of the columns within five columns in the in this table called test baby so to fill in the blanks we can just say that we have five so the first one is already been filled by the original information that we want to see. So we will just fill in the blanks, which is four. So maybe just say two, three, four, five, because in place of one, we are viewing the column called brand. So if I do the same thing, now the uh, SQL is perfectly okay. And they will give me the values. Now they didn't give me the values. I don't know why. Let me see again. So, so let's start from test baby where name is HNC union select brand. Okay, maybe there is some mistake and I'll do this again just to make sure. So select one, two, three, four, and in this I will say name. Okay. I didn't no, oh, okay. Everything was right. I don't know why I just got one row. So whatever, let me test this again. Name from test BB where brand equals any fire you can see that that the query is executed perfectly right now so the five columns is used by the original query because we are doing star star means give me all the informations and all the number of all the columns is five here so we are getting five columns here so select one two three four five is the five number of columns so the first one uses up all the columns but on the next query we are we just want the name from the same table where the brand name is edifier so we can just do that but the rest of the columns we have to fill up with random values so in this case we are using one two three and four so on the next row here on the union selects view we are getting one two three four which this part of query doesn't mean nothing so on the fifth column as of here we the, this is the fifth place where we gave the the column name called name so we are getting the fifth column right up here below the brand and this is how we can leverage mysql into giving us information about other tables within a website if of course the website is mysql i mysql injectable so now let's directly move on
to the injection part. I hope that uh, whatever I wanted you to understand about SQL and simple database management systems, you did understand that. So now let's move on to the next part. So I'm not going to use already vulnerable uh, SQL injectable web applications that others uses like DVWA or BWAP. I'm not going to use those because these websites have complex code and you cannot see the code by code for yourself. So I have made this simple application that displays the same information as you saw in the database before. So I will show you the code, but before that, let me show you how a normal website usually works. So if I type in here, edifier and search for it, I get this value. Now, I have added the query as well here, so you can see what is the exact query that is being executed. So the query that is done by me in PHP is select star from test BB where brand is equal to edifier. That is the same thing that I have showed you till now. And I get this information, 1700 VT edifier speakers, which costs at uh, 12,500. So if I do the same thing as say, uh, sound magic I get the information about this ETNC product so as of now this is pretty much straightforward but now we are going to use SQL injection now if I do this search again and you see what is written here exactly so select star from test baby where brand is equal to this up until this part the query is okay we do not need to worry about what has happened here but just see this sound magic is a string and in my SQL the string is denoted by these two single quotes or double quotes whatever it is it depends upon the programmer we can use any one of them so these two single quotes mean this first single quote means this that this is the start of a string and this single quote means this is the end of the string so how a hacker can leverage this into giving us more information that is that was originally not intended by the programmer so what if I could end this string right here in the middle maybe and write a second part of a query that is not intended to. So if I do the same thing, I will get an SQL error. Now, what is happening here is that our SQL is thinking that this single quote must be a start of another string, so which is not, of course, been ended in the right part. So that's why SQL is thinking that I have done a malformed command or the statement is wrong by itself. So what would have happened if I gave it a comment sign? So the comment sign in MySQL is two dashes and a space. Now what the comment does is it ignores whatever it is written after we have given the comment sign. So if I have done this and search for it, see I get no errors because this quote is now completely ignored. So what I have to learn from this is that we can manually end a string here and write a manual query that will work fine so as we already know that there are five columns in this table called test bb we can actually do stuff like some magic and i'm ending the query right there so and adding a second part of the query which might be union select one two three four five from dual and give it the comment sign because now the original single code that was existing in the query that is done by me in the PHP code is now is getting ignored. So if I search for it, you can see the original query that is being passed to my SQL is select star from test baby where brand is equal to sound magic. Now at this part I have terminated the string manually and added the part of a second query that is union select one two three four five from dual and we are ignoring the original single code that was given by the programmer which is in this case me. So as I have shown you in union select in the previous part that I will get whatever I select on the next part of the or on the second part of the query is going to be appended below or next to the original query or the first part of the query so the first part of the query gives us this result and the second part of the query gives us this result now if you remember that in the first part of the video I have already said you that you cannot actually trust whatever HTML output we are getting so this is the same here that we do not get the ID and I have selected specifically one, two, three, four, and five, but we are not getting the one because the one is hidden and the programmer, in this case me, I have not decided to display the ID in the web browser. So we cannot actually determine how many columns uh, the current table has just by trusting the result in my web browser. Now, from this instant, forget that you know that I have showed you the number of columns and all the information about this test BB. 
all right so just forget whatever i have shown you till now so we can actually go ahead and manually inject sql to know everything that i have showed you up till now so let's say that we do not know how many columns this table has and i'm just a regular user or hacker trying to uh, inject some sql commands so if i just search for edifier we get this values Currently, I'm seeing, I can see that we have four columns, but as I say, do not trust the results or do not count the number of columns that is showed actually in the HTML. So at this part, we have manually tried to forget how many tables we know exist in this test uh, table, uh, test underscore BB table. So we are going to find out everything that I have showed you till now by using SQL injection. So let's open up burp switch real quick, turn the intercept on and do this query again, but catch this request catch this post request specifically now there is something called post and get and i want you to study those things by yourself because the time is limited and i cannot show you everything so just send this to repeater now what repeater does in burp suit is that it captures the original query that a user makes from a web browser to the server and then using repeater burp suit makes its own connections to the database does not requiring the user to manually go to the web browser and do the same things so as we have taken this request to the repeater i can turn the proxy off and close this because we do not need this because repeater can do the same things that a web browser can from now on all we need to do here is go to the parameter section and we know that we have searched for edifier just for an example let me show you what happens when we send the request via burp suite so we get the raw HTML in this case. We can also go ahead and render this. So let me see if Bobsu can actually render this. Okay, it did actually render this. Now we are getting the same information that we have already got from a web browser. Now we can use this to escalate to more advanced stuff. <sighs> so let me go ahead and type edifier plus. Now the plus in here means space, and we do need use to need plus. So uh, the spaces doesn't get filled with percentage 2020s and stuff like that so i can just show you if i do edifier space uh, one maybe and send it i will get a uh, sql error because this is not a right query but if we just double click we can see that we are getting a percent 20 so this is very much annoying so we, if we just use a plus we won't get this so we are going to get the same error here but if we just double click it we can see that we still get plus so we are going to use plus now as we are getting started to SQL injection, I have already told you the first thing to do in any case of SQL injection is first know how many columns does the current table uses. So we can do this by trying to union select more columns until and unless we hit the right spot. So as you have already uh, seen in the previous part of this video that MySQL does actually say after a malformed union select comment that the number of columns does not match for both the first part and the second part of the union select. So we are going to use this error because this error will only be present if the number of columns don't match. If it does match, then there will be no errors. So we are going to brute force the number of columns in this uh, table manually. So what I'm going to do is write union plus select plus one and then go for the comment sign. Now in the comments, the comment sign is specifically double dash and a space. If you do not use this space, the, this query will fail and you will feel demotivated that. Actually, I felt demotivated for a long time because I just missed this part. Anyways, if I run this, I can see that there will be an error. So we are going to try this on and on until and unless we do not get an error, all right? So now let's try with two. We are, I'm just going to move over to raw so we can actually see the data without much scrolling. So we still get the error. So let's try with three columns now and hit send. We are still getting an error. So let's try with four. Still getting an error. Let's try with five. And still getting an error. Now, no, we are not getting an error because now we can specifically see that after five columns, the website is not returning any errors, which means the original column that the, that the table currently that my website is using has five columns. So as of now, we know that this table 
that we are currently in that the website is currently using as five columns so we can try and display data from other tables right here in this same space of one two three four and five so before we move on to the next part where we can actually uh, use this SQL injection to show different kinds of data I'm just going to take you over to the GUI version of my uh, MySQL server which exists in this uh, virtual machine and show you what are the exact number of databases that actually comes with MySQL if you are using software like example WAMP. So phpMyAdmin is the name and it's open here right now. So let me log in and you can see the same number of databases that you have already seen on the CLI version which I showed you till now. So you can see that this test database which is which my website is currently using is right here and within that I have these test BB tables. So I'm mainly going to talk about two particular databases here that is information schema and MySQL. Now these databases is very interesting in this lecture because information schema this particular database has a table called tables. So pay attention to what I say because this might be a little bit confusing. So this information schema database has a lot of tables within which there is a specific table called tables which holds the names and informations of all the other tables that resides in this database along with their respective databases names. If I want I can say that again mainly what I'm trying to say is information schema database holds information and metadata about other tables and other databases that resides in the same SQL server and this MySQL database holds critical information such as the current users or the total number of users that use this MySQL server and their usernames and passwords. So this is almost common for all the database vendors out there and this information schema table is this information schema database is common for all of these databases. So what we are going to use in the union select after this second uh, for the second part is that we are going to query these databases and we are going to grab all the information we can uh, from this information schema database after the union part on the query that we are going to use as SQL injection. So let's move on to the verb suite again. So as we now know that we have only five columns and whatever we want to do, we have to use these five columns only, we can now form our queries. Now let me quickly open up my notepad and, and manually write the query because uh, in verb suite it's too much small for me to see. So I'm going to type over here. So union select. Now the particular columns that information schemas table particularly has is table name and table schema. Now the table name is the column within the name tables, within the table called tables that exists in the information schema database that only has the names of all the tables in the SQL server and the table schema is the database names that the tables reside in. So if the name of the table is test BB, then its corresponding table name, table schema will be test. So union select table name, table schema from, now we are going to write the name of the database here first. So information schema, then the name of the table, tables where now we are going to dismiss all the information that already comes with MySQL because if I do not do this, we will get a whole page of entries which we do not need. So where table schema is not equal to PHP my admin and I'm going to query and I'm going to copy this part because I'm going to use this a lot of times now. Where table schema is not equal to PHP my admin and Table schema is not equal to MySQL and table schema is not equal to information schema as well. I don't want to know the tables and table information from the pH uh, from the information schemas tables itself. So we just want to know what information does this information schema database knows about other tables. We do not want to know what information schema database knows about itself. So table schema is not equal to information underscore schema and again table schema is not equal to performance schema. 
So we have completed all the four databases that we do not need information from. Just, okay, I have forgot to give the plus signs. Okay, I do not actually need one because this is only the first time I'm going to use it. So there is only one mistake that I intentionally did and I want you to notice what it is. So table name and table schema is two columns, but the current table we already found, found out by brute forcing that the current table has five columns. So this will only result in two columns. So how can we match them? Just by saying that it took table name took the part of one, table schema took the part for two, and we just have remaining three, four, and five. Right? So from information schema tables, now we can actually copy this and paste it right here and send this to see what happens. Okay, I'm go I'm getting an error. I'm not sure why. So just let me check it. Union select table name, table schema, three, four, five. Okay, just let me give these pluses. From information schema dot tables, where table schema not equal to PHP my admin and table schema not equal to MySQL and table schema not equal to information schema and table schema not equal to performance schema I don't think I have made any mistakes right here but I don't know why it's not happening table schema not equal to performance schema okay I just forgot to give the common sign so plus that will do I suppose yes so as you can see that the 3 4 and 5 is being displayed right here so there is one thing that I have done a mistake for and can you tell me what it is you can see that we can get the names of the tables right okay these are the names of the databases actually because tables cannot have same names so these are the databases but where is the table name if you can remember the table name was the first column that we have given it and the first column represents ID and in this HTML page we did not display the ID so the table name is also hidden so in this case we are going to do the same thing that we have did before so I'm going to just type one here and in place of three I'm going to give the table names so table name so if I send this yes now we get everything so this means the first row of course because that that is the original intention of the programmer but what he didn't think of it I uh, think of was this so bwap is the database blog is the user uh, blog is the table bwap is also the database heroes is the table so in this case in my case particularly test is the database and test bb is the table now how can we be sure that our database is currently using test bb because we haven't yet found out all the information about test bb yet so we need to know what column names does test bb uses so interestingly in the information schema database there is another table called columns which apparently hold all the information about all the columns that exists in the whole database so we can just do this we can delete this and say union plus select plus column okay one two three four and in, in place of five we are going to use the column names so column name from information schema dot columns where table name equals test underscore bb because we wanted to know that if we are using test bb currently in this database so if I do this and copy this right here and send this let's see what we get see 
we are getting all the com all the column names so id name price category and brand now if i see that the first row the informations in the first row actually goes with these five columns no because the id is not showing here so we cannot be sure of 1700 bt is a product name so we get name right here edifies the name of a brand so we get brand right here speakers is a category so there is also category and 12500 is a price and we also get price so we know that the current table that our website is currently using now is the test bb so the information from test bb we do not need anymore because we are already getting that in the website so we are going to do some more jobs such as let's say that i have already told you mysql database the original database in in the database called mysql also has a database called mysql right if it is con confusing let me say it again my mysql server already comes with another database called mysql which apparently holds information about all the users and passwords that resides in this mysql server so we can actually query those data from these union selects so what we can do is now say union plus select one two three and we are going to search for username and password so username password from mysql user so user is actually a table that resides within this mysql database and i particularly know it if you don't know it you can always search for google and you can also query what table names are there in this mysql from the information schema uh, database right because information schema database apparently also has information about the mysql database and uh, the users table that resides within the mysql right so i already know that but if you don't you can actually use the same things but in the previous comment when i show you select uh, table name and table schema from information underscore schema dot tables where uh, the schema name is not php my admin not mysql uh, not uh, performance schema and not information schema but and in that case, you can all only select that select table names and select table schema from information underscore schema of tables where this table schema is equal to MySQL. Doing that comment, it will show you all of the tables that the MySQL database has. And then you can also find out the columns by searching the same thing in information underscore schema of columns, and then you can get the same information. So apparently, I already know this table called user, and for all of the MySQL databases, this particular table is the same. So select 123, username and password from MySQL user. And this is going to be the hold command. So if I do the same thing here, let me see what I get. So if I send this, I'm getting an error. So in that case, I think it is going to be just user instead of username. So let me send it again. Yep, we get that. So we get the first row, just ignore it then we get all the username and password so root is a user i guess uh, pma is a user and we get a username called cfo right and his password now this is a hashed password you can actually crack these type of hashes using brute force or rainbow tables and however you want but you can actually get the hash of a important username so user so cfo is a financial officer i guess so if there is a there is a user called CFO in a database and maybe he's a very he's a very important person he has a lot of information about a lot of important things so you can actually crack his password and directly log in in MySQL PHP admin as the CFO and you can get access to all the information that he currently has so the basics of uh, the basic MySQL or the classical MySQL injection is done with because this is the main thing that you, you that you need to know about so now you can query any other table from any other databases that you like to but before ending this video i'm going to show you something more fun so what you can do actually is you can use mysql to write a file which is going to be acting as a backdoor so we can actually use the union select command and use some code snippets from php just to make another file within the same directory and that file is going to be used as a backdoor which can lead to a much bigger scale of attack so what i'm going to do here is first write this query in the notepad so in this case i'm going to write again union select 
I think the first part would be the same, but we are not going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 just because of the reason that I am going to output the whole result of this query into a file and that is going to be a PHP file. Now, just by itself, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is not a PHP command by itself. It is going to be declared as a value and a value is not present without a variable. So, if we are not declaring a variable right now, so the PHP uh, compiler will take that as an error because he, the PHP compiler doesn't know what to do with those values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we are going to just do with nulls. And we are also going to remove the edifier uh, command by itself or the search edifier by itself because that edifier will also be on the PHP file by itself which PHP can't make sense of and will throw us an error. So what I'm going to write here is select null, null, and maybe write null five times. And on the fifth time, I'm going to actually write the PHP code. So PHP code starts with, and this is going to be considered as a string by MySQL. So I'm going to just give on a single quote. So PHP starts and ends with the PHP tags, as you have probably know. So PHP, now we are going to go over to the system command. Now the system command for probably all of the programming languages is a command that will pass arguments directly to the system. And the results supplied from the system will be shown by PHP and compiled by PHP and shown to the front end to the user. So we can do system, what I'm writing. So system, uh, where is this? Yeah. Now request is a global variable that accepts both post and get requests. You can actually study that by yourself. I'm not going to show in details. So let's write in CMD and end the statement right here. Then use these particular SQL commands that is into out file. Now just a disclaimer that this will not work on every system except of those which particularly has write and read file permissions that is given in by the administrator. So if there is no write and read permissions then we cannot actually get this information. So into out file then again I'm going to give as a string. Now as I'm using Windows as the backend server here which you can actually check out using a simple nmap uh, command. So if you know that it's Windows then the default installation folder for Windows is exempt C exempt then htdocs is going to be the folder and my website is currently in a folder called basic underscore query so I'm going to write this file into that folder so exempt I know that this command is being executed in the C directory so we are going to omit C and directly write exempt htdocs then basic query and cmd.php. I'm just write, going to write cmd.php. Um, if everything is alright, I think the comment would run. And there is no way to actually know that if this comment ran because we are going to get an SQL error eventually. But we have to just go and search for this particular file directly in the web browser. So if I do this, I think that this will work. I cannot forget the comment sign again. So let's run this. All right. The single quote is very important. So if this is okay, it should run. So I'm going to send it and I'm going to get an SQL error, but this will be made sure by uh, so if I go in here and write cmd.php no URL was found. As you can see that my command has actually has failed. So let me try it again. So union select up until this part is okay. Null, 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 null. PHP. I'm going to just check that if I did anything wrong. So, okay. I think there is a mistake right here because this single quote is thinking that the end of the statement is right here. So into out file. Let me check with this if it works. Mm. So of course we are going to get a warning, but let me now check if the CMD PHP exists. Yes, we actually got now the confirmation that the CMD PHP actually exists here. So you can see that we are getting a system error 
that cannot execute a blank comment because we did not supply any queries right here. You can see that the null comments, the null that we actually printed out exists right here and these are ignored. So also the CMD variable is missing because we did not supply any parameters which we are going to do now and this will be passed by the dollar underscore request global variable that you have seen me type. So where CMD equal to if I say DIR, let's see what happens. See, you can see all of the files and folders that currently exists in the folder. So cmd.php, index.php and search.php is the other files that currently exist. So if I do something like maybe who am I, we are going to get the in basic information about a computer. We can also we can also ping. So ping maybe 8.8.8.8. .8 so if I do that, okay, so there is something an error, I guess. Ping. This shouldn't actually give an error. So where uh, okay, CMD equal to ping eight dot eight dot eight dot eight. So if I do that, I think the results of the ping will be displayed right here. So you can see that these are the results from my ping. Now you can actually uh, give a backdoor command or make a bind shell or open a particular port with a command and then access that particular port from another computer thus giving yourself a backdoor and that backdoor could be made permanent then can be uh, upgraded to a metapreter shell so this is what i wanted to show you today and just for a disclaimer that why i'm doing this long video today about manual sql injection because actually a few months ago i actually honestly i'm very new to this sql injections topic myself but i wanted to do this because the last six months i've been trying to you know play around with uh, virtual machines and vulnerable boxes of course intentionally vulnerable so there is this uh, virtual machine called kvm3 or cryptrix cryptrix3 virtual machine and in that vm there is an sql injection error that is supposed to happen so i have actually solved this box previously and i know that 60 percent of all the exploits in that particular box is sql injection so all i needed was to launch a sql map and perform all the yes and no's and right I agree type of uh, commands within uh, SQL map which is an automated SQL injection automator so when I pressed enter it took probably like a minute to give me all the information about all the users that exists on that particular MySQL database along with the correct versions of their usernames and passwords now that is definitely fascinating stuff but I didn't like it because I couldn't see what's happening behind the scenes. That's why I took the liberty to understand, go ahead and understand MySQL injections myself. And this is my way of giving back to the community. So I hope you have understood the little of what I showed you today about SQL injection. That is the basic and the classic ones. Best of luck and go ahead and do the advanced part. Maybe I will do a video on that myself one day. So for now, goodbye. See you next time.